good morning class 7 so we were doing the elements of weather and this is what we're going to continue with today as well because we've not finished the chapter so what we've done last in short let us again do the as recapitulation so elements of weather we, we were doing and we did the weather and we did the weather and the climate definition difference then we started off with the first element and um, that is the temperature wherein i told you that temperature is influenced by latitude altitude distance from the sea wind and the ocean current and then we did we went on doing the types of heating of the atmosphere there i told you about the radiation how radiation conduction and convection is influencing the uh, influencing the atmosphere and heating the atmosphere in different ways. Then we did the uh, temperature zones of the earth. There are three temperature zones of the earth and torrid zone, frigid zone and temperate zone. That's what we did last. So I hope you all have understood till here. Now today we are going to do the next, uh, next you know, element and that's the atmospheric pressure. Okay. Now, atmospheric pressure means pressure means a force that is exerted. Okay, and atmospheric pressure means a force that is that is a force or the pressure that is exerted by air. Okay, force or pressure that is exerted by the air on the surface of the earth is known as atmospheric pressure. Now you have to understand that atmospheric air has weight. When we are talking about atmosphere, we are talking about air. And air has weight. So this weight of the air exerting pressure on the surface of the earth is what is called atmospheric pressure. Now the atmospheric pressure uh, will be different at different places. Okay, it varies from one place to another. It also varies from time to time. Why is this happening is because atmospheric pressure is again affected or influenced by various factors like temperature, altitude, and the Earth's rotation. Okay, so first is the temperature, how the temperature is influencing the atmosphere, atmospheric pressure. So hot places will have low temperature, low pressure, remember, and cold places will have high pressure how is it possible is because when the temperature is high air around us becomes warm you know the warm air is lighter and it rises so anything that is rising up cannot exert pressure okay cannot exert force so that's the reason why hot places have low pressure Whereas cold places have high pressure because the cold places, the air is cold, air around us is cold, the cold air is heavy and instead of rising, it sinks down. And that's the reason why it exerts more pressure. So hot places have low pressure, cold places have high pressure, high atmospheric pressure. Okay? So now pressure differences also bring about the movement of the air the movement of the air horizontal movement of the air is called wind and wind always blows from a high pressure region to a low pressure region wind blows from a high pressure region to a low pressure region i'm repeating it again okay there is another movement of the air known as the vertical movement okay up and down movement so this vertical movement of the air is known as air current. So there are two movements of air. One is known as the horizontal movement of the air, which is called uh, wind side to side movement. Another one is the vertical movement of the air known as the air current, which is up and down movement. So always remember that pressure is related to temperature. The second is the altitude. Now, altitude meaning height, okay? Height, as we go higher up the mountains, the atmospheric pressure, the atmospheric pressure becomes 
uh, atmosphere, sorry, atmosphere or the air around us becomes thinner. Okay, and the thin air will exert <coughs> less pressure, which is, which are, again causes low atmospheric pressure. So high mounted areas will have low atmospheric pressure, whereas low areas like plains have high atmospheric pressure. I hope you understood. So as we keep moving up high in the mountains, the air pressure keeps decreasing. So higher the height, pressure becomes lower and the reason is because the air is thin. Thin air exerts less pressure. The atmospheric pressure, it is measured with an instrument known as barometer. See this barometer underlined. Commonly used barometers are, there are commonly used barometers and they are known as First one, 14 barometer, second mercury barometer, okay, and third one is the aneroid barometer. First one, 14 barometer underlined, mercury barometer underlined in your book, and the third one is the aneroid barometer. They are the types of barometers that we use to measure the atmospheric pressure, okay. And also underline that atmospheric pressure is me measured in millibars. Millibars are the units you can say of measuring the atmospheric pressure. So normal pressure, normal air pressure at sea level is 1013 or 1013 millibars. Millibars are also written in short as MB. Small m, small b. Okay, so far so good. So now you can see with the help of this diagram, this diagram is very important. With the increase in altitude, this side it's showing the altitude increase, height is rising 1500, 3000, 4500, 6000, 7500, like that. So as the height increases, the air becomes rarefied, rarefication of air, rarefication means thinner, air becomes thinner. Okay. And that's why the pressure is also less. You can also see that as the temperature, I mean, as the altitude is increasing, the temperature is also decreasing. So this diagram is very important for you all to understand, okay? The higher the altitude, pressure becomes low. Higher the altitude, temperature also becomes low, okay? All right, now let's move on to the next, and that's the wind. Wind, I told you earlier also that the horizontal movement of the air is called wind. Horizontal movement meaning the side to side movement of the air is called wind. And the wind always blows from a high pressure region to a low pressure region. Always remember that. So there is, that is why there is uneven, whenever there is uneven heating of the surface of the earth by the sun, the temperature differs when the temperature differs the pressure differs and wherever there is low pressure the wind starts to blow from the high to those areas okay so that is what is explained here now winds are responsible responsible also for the transfer of heat or over the earth surface how is there are two types of wind cold and the Cold and the <coughs> and the warm winds. Wherever the cold winds blow, the uh, the wherever the cold winds blow, the air around that area will be cold. Temperatures become lower, and uh, wherever there is warm winds blowing, the temperature of those areas become very high. All right. Also understand that the greater the <coughs> difference between um, pressure of one area and the other area, then the temp pressure difference between the two areas become greater, the speed of the wind also becomes higher, okay? That's why we notice sometimes the wind that blows, we also have experience to think about it, sometimes the wind that blows is very gentle, which is known as breeze. That's the time the temp pressure difference between two areas are very low less whereas if the wind sometimes we experience the wind blows very very fast okay at a very high speed that time you're supposed to understand that the 
pressure difference between two areas from where the wind is blowing and to where the wind is blowing when the pressure difference between these two areas are very very high then the speed also becomes or speed of the wind also becomes very high all right now the wind uh, the speed uh, talking about the speed we also need to know that there are means that are given of the wind the wind they do not blow from only one re region it can blow from any direction so according to the direction it blows from it's been given the names like easterly wind if it is blowing from east westerly wind if it, if it is blowing from the west and then um, nor northerly wind okay southerly wind they are all names of the winds which has been given to the wind according to the direction they are blowing in from now there is one more fact about the wind is that because of the rotation of the earth there is a force that is created okay there's a force that is created by the rotation of the earth this force is known as coronis force understood this coronis force is responsible for deflection of the wind to the right or in the northern hemisphere and to the left in the southern hemisphere meaning the winds that are blowing are all deflected all moving towards the right hand side in the northern hemisphere and towards the left hand side in the southern hemisphere this is possible because of a force known as correlis force and this force is created by the rotation of the earth please underline this portion okay the what is the function of the coronis force and what is coronis force also is important all right now this coronis force is explained by a law known as the ferrell's law this ferrell's law explains that the wind gets deflected to the right in the northern hemisphere and to the to the left in the southern hemisphere and the wind that are blowing in the north are known as the northeast trade winds the wind that are deflected to the south in the southern to the left in the southern hemisphere are known as southeast trade winds just just understand the names for now you you, you just need to be familiar with the names and understand that the ferrell's law explains that in the northern hemisphere this portion in the northern hemisphere the winds get deflected to the right whereas in the southern hemisphere the winds get deflected to the left that's all that you need to know all right here now <clears throat> there is an instrument known as wind vane which you have to underline here that wind vane records the wind direction from where it is blowing to where it is blowing that's recorded by an instrument known as the wind vane all right and wind speed is is done is measured with an instrument known as anemometer. So there are three instruments we just learned in for the wind. One was the uh, sorry, two instruments that we learned. One was to record the uh, direction. One was to record the speed. Okay, direction is wind wind. Speed is anemometer. Please underline. You need to know the names of the instruments as well. Now, next element that we have is the humidity. Humidity means the amount of moisture present in the air. That's basically humidity. Okay. Now, humidity also varies from time to time and from place to place. There's a, uh, there is a definite limit to how much vapor the air can hold. Air cannot hold too much water vapor. Okay. So, whatever amount of water vapor it can hold <coughs> is called saturated air the maximum amount of water vapor it can hold any any amount of uh, you know any amount of air can hold a certain amount of water vapor the maximum amount it can hold when it is holding is known as saturated air it reaches its saturation point beyond which it cannot hold any more water understood now the uh, I'll also understand the hotter the place, the more water vapor it can hold. Okay, hotter place will be able to hold the air in the hotter place will be able to hold more water vapor. And 
and the maximum capacity of the air to hold water water uh, is saturated air okay the air holds if the air holds less than what it can actually hold it's known as unsaturated air okay if the capacity is 100 percent if the capacity of the air to hold water is 100 percent and it, if it is actually holding 100 percent of water vapor then it's known as saturated air but suppose if it has the capacity to hold 100 percent but it is not holding it is it only has 80 percent or 90 percent of the water vapor in it then that's known as unsaturated air meaning it still has the capacity to absorb some of the water vapor from the air all right so i hope you understood the humidity part now next now again remember the humidity more the humidity the temperature becomes higher because water vapor has the capacity to hold more uh, heat so higher the humidity higher the temperature also okay so next we have is the uh, uh children i think we will not be able to do precipitation today because the video when the video becomes too long it will be very difficult for me to upload for you to also download so that's why precipitation and the cloud cover that we have the last portion of the chapter we will do it in uh, the next video next week okay so till uh, for today till humidity will complete it so i'll be giving you some questions as well you will have to solve that all right i hope you all understood whatever i'm trying to to make you understand so you can watch the video again and again thank you so much and keep doing your work okay stay safe